today we will be discussing how to prepare international relations for mains 2017 now first let us have a look at the main syllabus given in gs2 given under gs2 now in the syllabus regarding international relations mainly you have four major important topics that has been given by upsc so you have mainly the first major topic is india and its neighborhood relations where you have to study about india's relationship with the, our neighborhood countries like china pakistan then bangladesh myanmar and all and neighborhood relations has been a favorite topic of upsc it has appeared on the mains examination question paper many many times then another thing we have to discuss is about bilateral relations of india and in bilateral relations from the mains point of view we mainly have to focus on india's relationship with the various global powers like usa russia china and japan but in addition to that again this year for this year mains india israel relations is very very important due to the fact that our prime minister narendra modi recently made a historic visit to israel he became the first indian prime minister to visit israel then in addition to that 2017 marks the 25th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between india and israel so in 2017 means there is a huge probability that there will be a question on india israel relations then again in addition to that in this year mains examination india russia bilateral relationship will also be of very important nature india and russia we have a special and privileged strategic partnership and this year marks the 70th anniversary of india russia diplomatic relations so these two topics are very very important for this year mains examination then we have to study about various regional and global groupings we have to study about organizations like gcc asean sarc bimstec nam etc then agreements involving india or affecting india's interests so again we have several non proliferation agreements then we have agreements like the information technology agreements so these sort of agreements which involves india or which can affect india's interests is again important then effects of policies and politics of developed and developing countries on india's interests see for example recently the united states made several reforms to the h1b visa then again uh, there were reforms introduced to another visa called 457 visa or 457 visa by the australian government so these sort of policies by other countries when it affects india's interests that is of very important to upsc also then again uh, in this section another important topic is the one belt one road initiative and upsc has never asked us any question regarding the one belt one road initiative or the belt and road initiative in the mains examination before so this year again there is a huge possibility that uh, we can get a question on the belt and road initiative then indian diaspora and indian diaspora although not prominently featured in the recent year upsc mains examination questions you can expect diaspora related questions again uh, with respect to several other topics also so for example you can uh, get questions regarding things like uh, how will the h1b visa reforms affect indian diaspora what are the challenges faced by the indian diaspora and all and you have the official website for indian diaspora which you can use for preparing for questions with respect to indian diaspora then another very very favorite topic of upsc is the important international institutions especially institutions like wto un world bank imf brics new development bank etc and there has been a lot of questions in the mains examination from this area especially about the wto wto has been a very favorite topic of upsc then their structure and mandate so then again you had uh, several questions regarding the un security council then in last year mains there was a highly unexpected question regarding the unesco macbride commission report so again you have to have an idea about various agencies of the un and all
now let us try to briefly go through the UPSC previous year mains questions. Now, if you analyze the 2016 previous year mains questions, you had mainly four questions from GS2 on international relations. One question was that uh, the broader aims and objectives of WTO are to manage and to promote international trade in the era of globalization, but the Doha round of negotiations seems doomed due to differences between developed and the developing countries. Discuss in the Indian perspective. And this question basically it came from a particular statement made by the Minister of External Affairs during that particular period. So again you can expect these sort of questions from UPSC. UPSC will be giving you some statements and then they will ask you to comment on that statement or critically analyze that statement or discuss in the Indian perspective about that statement. So this is again one reason why we had to refer to the Ministry of External Affairs website. UPSC will be taking these sort of statements from the Ministry of External Affairs website. Again this kind of statements are often made by many of the diplomats as well as MEX spokespersons and all. So that is one area that we need to focus. We need to carefully go through the Ministry of External Affairs website. Then another question was regarding a foreign policy initiative of India, the Look East policy. Evaluate the economic and strategic dimensions of India's Look East policy in the context of post-Cold War era international relations. So now UPSC, now we are calling the Look East policy as Act East policy, but UPSC have used the term Look East policy. Now what does this signify? signify? So UPSC wants us to analyze the Look East policy from the post-Cold War scenario itself. So we need to be aware about the past of the relations also. So you need to be aware about the historical context, that is what uh, UPSC wants the aspirants to do. So first you should start here, first you should start uh, what was the reason to introduce the Look East policy after the end of the Cold War era and uh, what was the economic relations under the Look East policy and now we have announced the Act East policy. So there is a new strategic dimension being added to the Look East policy and what is the reason for that? Basically the main uh, rationale behind the induction of an Act East policy was the rise of China. So you need to mention about the various phases of the Look East policy why there was a strategic angle that is being added to the Look East policy at all. So it is not like you can completely crack questions on international relations by simply reading newspapers. You need to have a basic idea about the historical context of India's various relationship with the different countries as well as various organizations. Then again another question in the 2016 mains examination was again a statement type question. UPSC has again given us a statement. This time again uh, they took that statement from the MEA website. Increasing cross border terrorist attacks in India and growing interference in the internal affairs of several member states by Pakistan are not conductive for the future of SARC. Explain with the suitable examples. See again. Uh, a statement from the MEA website, again a statement made by the MEA spokesperson and they have asked us to comment on that statement. They have asked us to explain that uh, statement with a suitable example. So this is one thing we need to note down. We need to have an idea about uh, the various official statements by, made by Ministry of External Affairs regarding key international events as well as key foreign policy initiatives and all. For example, this year regarding the Belt and Road Initiative of China, India decided to not participate in the Belt and Road Forum which was held in 2017 and the official statement of the Ministry of External Affairs regarding the India's absence from participating in the Belt and Road Forum was that connectivity projects must be pursued in a manner that respects the territorial integrity and sovereignty of other nations. So that was India's official re response towarding, towards the Belt and Road Initiative. So again you need to have an idea about the sort of official statements that are being made by the MEA 
spokespersons. Again, you can get these sort of questions. Then, what are the aims and objectives of the McBride Commission of the UNESCO? Again, one of the key aims of UNESCO is democratization of the communication channels. And that is where the significance of the McBride Commission lies. And UPSC has asked us a question in 2016 regarding the McBride Commission and what is India's position on the McBride Commission. So again, you, you need to study about various agencies of the United Nations as well as major important international institutions. Now the peculiarity of the 2016 mains question paper was that uh, in general studies one also you had uh, several questions which were related to international relations. For example, you had a question on South China Sea. South China Sea has assumed great geopolitical significance in the present context. So although this was a question that was asked in GS1, you can see that uh, there is a mention of geopolitical significance which again is a reference to the international relations angle regarding the South China Sea issue. Then another question was regarding the Indus Water Treaty, present an account of the Indus Water Treaty and examine its ecological, economic and political implications in the context of changing bilateral relations. So again, you can see that uh, even in general studies one also they are mixing up the international relations thing. They are uh, asking questions to us by combining various aspects like geography, international relations and ecology and all. So again, in, in dealing with uh, other topics also international relations has become a major angle that you need to focus. And if you go through the topic wise analysis of the previous year international relations questions, you can understand that neighborhood relations has been a very key area in international relations regarding the mains examination. In 2016, we had one question on the neighborhood relations. In 2015, we had two questions. In 2014, there was one question regarding the neighborhood relation. And in 2013, we had a whooping six questions regarding the neighborhood relations. And now that uh, the present Narendra Modi government has kick started the neighborhood first policy, again we can expect much more questions on the neighborhood relations. And when it comes to neighborhood relations this year, India Bhutan relations is really, really important due to the Doklam standoff. Doklam standoff highlighted the special relationship between India and Bhutan. Again, one peculiarity of the UPSC mains examination from 2011 onwards has been that uh, India-China relations has been frequently appearing on the UPSC mains question paper in every year in the mains examination. So again, India-China relations this year is really important due to the Belt and Road Initiative. Then we have bilateral relations. There hasn't been much questions regarding the bilateral relations. But like I said before, this year bilateral relations is really, really important. Especially this year, India-US relations is important due to the fact that India was recently designated as a major defense partner of the United States. Then India-Japan relations is this year really, really important due to the fact that uh, this year the Asia-Africa Growth Corridor, a mega infrastructural project that was a joint initiative between India and Japan, which aims to link Asia and Africa was launched. Then India-Israel relations and India-Russia relations again is very important this year. So again this year you can surely expect questions regarding bilateral relations. Then again international institutions has been a favorite area of UPSC. In 2016 you had two questions and like in 2015, 14, 13 and all you had uh, several questions from international institutions. Then again, regional and global groupings is one area that, uh, that is mentioned in the syllabus. Then various agreements like uh, the non-proliferation agreements and all, which involves India or affects India's interests are of importance to us. Then when it comes to 
general studies 3 especially on the internal security or the security of India topic particularly in the syllabus there is a section being mentioned called security challenges and their management in border areas and in tackling this border management area under security of India knowledge of international relations is highly essential see for example in two let us go through the question from the questions from the border management section in 2016 you had two questions from border management one question was uh, the terms hot pursuit and surgical strikes are often used in connection with the armed action against terrorist attacks discuss the strategic impact of such actions hot pursuit we extensively dealt about hot pursuit when we discussed the indo myanmar relations hot pursuit basically was a military operation that was conducted by the indian special forces along the india myanmar border in responding to a terrorist attack which was conducted by the national socialist council of nagaland or the nscn then after the uri attack the indian special forces again they conducted the surgical strikes so this is one area again uh, knowledge of international relations is very essential to write the answers then border management is a complex task due to difficult terrain and hostile relations with some countries see again our relationship with the neighborhood countries is a key area under border management also elucidate the challenges and strategies for effective border management so that was there were two questions in border management uh, regarding in the security of india portion then in 2014 again you had a question like this china and pakistan have entered into an agreement for development of an economic corridor see this is a reference to the china pakistan economic corridor or cpec and they have asked this, that question in general studies three paper in 2014 what does what threat does this pose for india's security critically and example so again you have to have an idea about the belt and road initiative and the china pakistan economic corridor portion from international relations in order to be able to answer that particular question in 2013 we had another question from security of india portion how far are india's internal security challenges linked with the border management particularly in view of the long porous borders with the most country of south asia as well as myanmar so again you have a lot of this kind of questions from general studies 3 also which can be tackled with the extensive knowledge of international relations so in addition to contributing around 50 marks regarding our general studies 2 preparation in other areas like general studies 1 as well as general studies 3 international relations is really important for you so that's all about uh, how to prepare international relations